I've been affected to the core, you know, like since being here. Someone once described India to me as India has its guts out on the table. And it's so true. Like you come here and like that's a stereotype. Like India is a poor country. And so you see this everywhere. So I was like, yeah, I'm expecting to see this here. But then I'm coming here again. And once again, I was like, but I can't ignore it. Like I can't ignore it. I just can't do what everyone else does. And like nobody, like just go. And um, I think that since being in India, I, I kind of had this awareness building in me since before I came. So when I came here, my struggle was to be like, well, what do I do? Like, that's what I'm here for, right? I'm, I'm here to do something. One of the kids from the non-formal school, he, he's like, yeah, my sister, I mean, he must have told his sister about Bindi and I, like, yeah, go talk to those DDs from the States because, like, maybe they can help you with whatever is going on in your life. And I think he was too, too young to really understand the stuff that was happening to his older sister. Basically, um, what she told us was that she had just miscarried and she had to go get the rest of it, like the placenta and everything removed. And she was at home, usually she stays in the ground with her husband, but being there, like they were, her family was giving her a lot of problems. Um, one, because she had been married for five years and still they hadn't had any children. And um, again, like making her feel responsible and guilty for not being able to carry a child. Also having to go through everyone else being like, you're, like she actually said this, like her family said to her, you're not a woman because you're not being able to reproduce and have a child. And I just looked at her and I was like, like grabbed her hand like, no, I, not a couple of, and that's all I said. And like looked in her eyes and I was like, I, I know, like I don't know, but I know what you were alluding to right now. And like, you just had to keep talking to me because so, I'm trying. Things that used to really anger at me at first about like why do men have to sit there and why do women have to sit separately like I realized well only in that space do women confide in each other and like even with me you know I I was rather surprised at how easy they confided in me once I was al you know alone with them and now that I'm in India my journeys are paralleling my previous ones like at times I also feel awkward and strange again I'm not your typical Yankee I'm not your typical Desi um, and I feel young and old, I play with kids, and then I listen to older women cry. And I'm working in a community that's considered to be on the margins. People who have endured hardship that is really difficult to comprehend. I think what I've mostly like come to the conclusion is, like, I, um, I really think it's important for people to challenge their own perceptions and their own attitudes. Um, about the way they see the kid sleeping in the railway station. Because once you let yourself be affected to the core, then you can like think about bigger, broader picture things. And so for now, I'm always thinking about how do I connect what I think about to what I'm doing? And like, how do I let people know that I love them and I care about them? Like, how do I let that kid know that I'm not ignoring you? Like, I, I, you mean something to me. And when I go back to the States, What's, what's probably going to happen is that I am going to try to synthesize my experiences in a way that once again lets me, enables me to do action, you know, like that enables me to always, to connect to India the way I'm connecting to it now.